our Bibles, so we're going to go to the book of Psalm chapter 1, uh, Psalm chapter 1, and uh, going to look at uh, some more uh, things in regards to uh, uh, the study of God's Word. And if anything, I remember uh, or have been reminded uh, consistently regarding uh, the necessity of the study of uh, God's Word and uh, how important it is, how necessary it is, and how critical it is in regards to uh, our spiritual well-being. And so uh, wherever you are uh, here this morning, whether you're here with us uh, in person or watching online, I really want you to give your attention uh, to the Lord and to this subject of studying the Scriptures. Uh, as we've mentioned uh, more than once, uh, a lot of times we get too accustomed to uh, things that are very familiar to us. Uh, we have grown up, uh, I've uh, grown up all my life with the mindset and with the encouragement uh, of studying uh, God's Word, of having a personal devotion time, having a time uh, within the day that I read uh, the, the Scriptures. And, and, and what happens is, is because that has been so uh, ingrained and so mentioned uh, so many times that you're almost like, yeah, 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 I got that. But then it doesn't always become applied or uh, practiced as often as it should because of the familiarity uh, that we have with the statement. But today I want to uh, break that familiarity for us and remind us once again that it is necessary for us to study the Word of God. It's necessary for us to go beyond just the reading of the scriptures and into the memorization, the meditation, the engrafting of God's word into uh, our heart. Uh, I know that uh, uh, those that recently spent uh, uh, this uh, past week at camp, uh, of course, a lot of good things about camp, a lot of difficult things about camp, uh, uh, but one of the things that we are always grateful for uh, in regards to camp is when um, the Lord speaks to us through the preaching and the study of His Word. And, and uh, one of the things about the camp that we uh, associate attend, uh, it is very much um, prioritized throughout the entire a week, and uh, whereas I know a lot of camps focus on the fun and the games, and and uh, you know the uh, the practical jokes and pranks and things of that, uh, our uh, camp focuses on the scriptures. And uh, if you ask any one of our uh, teens that went, uh, they will uh, tell you they have been inundated with the Word of God all week long through personal devotion, uh, through group um, a Bible study, uh, through several services, uh, through uh, testimonies, and, 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 and then the driving home of all of that. And one of the things that was mentioned in, uh, I'm sorry, I'm missing that cue. What's that? Oh, memory verses, right, uh, uh, as they have several sheets of memory verses to memorize all week long, right? Uh, but one of the things that, that was uh, preached about this week was uh, just that, the necessity of God's Word, the engrafting uh, of God's Word that brings us to salvation, that continues our, our spiritual growth, the memorization, the meditation of uh, the Word of God, and, and how it's such a uh, an overlooked and not... Uh, a very uh, practiced uh, aspect of our Christian walk. And, and it fit right within the things the Lord has already been speaking uh, to us uh, in this particular service through these uh, studies and will continue to do so. In Psalm chapter 1, uh, I remember this uh, uh, psalm because this was uh, uh, one of those uh, challenges that my dad uh, provided my sister and I uh, after we had started uh, homeschooling, I believe it was, uh, and uh, he wanted to encourage us in, in reading and memorizing the scriptures. And so he told us for every chapter of the Bible that we memorized, he would pay us five bucks. Now, I don't know if that's bribery uh, or if that's incentive or reward uh, uh, or what, but it worked. And uh, one of the very first chapters I, re I memorized was Psalm chapter 1. And you say, why was that? Because it was six verses long. <laughs> you know, I figured, hey, five bucks, man, that's a dollar per verse and then a bonus one just because I like him, you know. And, uh, and so there, uh, as it, it, we got into that, let me, let me just um, uh, go on record uh, to say I think I got paid for 
one, maybe two chapters. <laughs> After that, dad said, hold on, time out. I'm going to go broke doing this. Uh, uh, let's rephrase this. You need to memorize the scriptures, all right? Uh, and God will bless you for that. Uh, so, uh, But this is one that I memorized, and it's one that says stuck with me uh, since that which is, is a is a kind of what we're striving for when we memorize the scripture. Uh, so many times we'll memorize, like for camp, uh, they memorized, uh, what was it, 60 scriptures? Is that what it was? Was it 29 scriptures? 30 scriptures? Whatever. For how many were on sheet? Huh? 10 a day. 10 a day? All right, so 30 scriptures uh, for that. And, and one of the things that I always... Um, go around and kind of, uh, um, what's the right word? Uh, encourage. Encourage? Is that a, is that a good word? Uh, or needle or, you know, um, give him a hard time about is, is, is I'll take the, one of the, 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 sh- the verse sheets uh, that they're going through and they may be that down towards, you know, scripture number eight or nine and, and I'll grab it and I'll say, okay, scripture number one, can you say that to me? And, uh, and it's already checked off. They've already said it. They've already memorized it, you know. And uh, then they say, well, give me the first word. Um, give me a second word. Can you just read it for me and then I'll tell it back to you, you know. <laughs> okay, that's not memorization. And I've always uh, put in there, you know, we ought to implement this thing that your points are taken away if you can't say it again, you know, encourage that, that aspect of memorization. But how many of us have memorized the scripture and then forgot it? Uh, many of us. I set out to memorize the whole book of Proverbs. I don't know that I can say the whole book of Proverbs for you uh, uh, to this day. But uh, what happens, though, if we take memorization and then when we do what the scripture says here in Psalm chapter 1 and we meditate upon it, then it becomes engrafted into our heart and then that memorization sticks with us and it becomes true memorization. Just like anything that we uh, want to memorize, we have to practice it over again. We have to go back over it. We have to have refreshers on it and we have to come uh, back to it maybe a month later, three months later, six months later in order to make sure that that memory is still there and that it sticks with us. But look here at the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter uh, one, it says, blessed is the man. Now, blessed is something that we all desire. Blessed is something that that uh, uh, if we're going to go in through this life and we're going to say, okay, here, give me some things that, that you would like to see take place in your life, we all would agree that we want to be blessed. We want to be blessed. Now, uh, blessed here, the, in the simple definition of it, just means happy. Uh, happy, and we, 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 we we're careful with the word happy because we don't want to uh, give the connotation that it's just simple, uh, you know, a small emotion that comes and goes. Uh, but we, we can think about it in the sense of true, uh, deep, heartfelt joy that resides there, right? Because when God makes us happy, when God gives us joy, it is a real kind of joy that can be a lasting kind of joy. Uh, We also think of the aspect of being blessed as being uh, provided for or uh, when good things are imparted to us, we would say that that is part of being uh, blessed. But here in Psalm 1, we Uh, verse 1, we have some things that we need to avoid in this life. And if you think about it, in a sense, uh, this is kind of uh, what would take up the time uh, or take away from us being in the Word of God. So it says, blessed is the man that walketh not, walketh not. Now those are key words there, not. Uh, nor and nor. Uh, Those are are saying, look, this is not what God desires. This is not what we should be doing. But blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now we know the ungodly are those that are without Christ, uh, those that do not have a godly perspective in life, uh, those that are leaning uh, to their own understanding in a fleshly manner uh, that is having those, uh, uh, those, that mentality or that doctrine that is contrary to what the Word of God states for us. And the counsel is the advice. It's the instruction. It's when they want to provide us with information in order uh, for us to be able to live our life. And so uh, this is something that God desires that we not walk in. 
And, and when you think about it, we can get it in all sorts of ways, in all sorts of manners. Uh, but somewhere along the line, it has to be communicated to us. Uh, it has, we have to take time to listen to it or to read it or to seek it out. He says, nor standeth in the way of sinners. I believe there's a progression here uh, that helps us also to uh, delineate some of this aspect of us taking on this ungodly counsel, taking on this information that is contrary to the word of God. First, we're walking in it, but then we're standing in it. We're waiting for it. We're, 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 we're starting to get comfortable in it, right? Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Now, and part of the way of sinners is the application of the ungodly counsel, of the ungodly information. Uh, part of the way of sinners, though, is also a, a learned method of, 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 of action. Uh, I know for me, I'm a very much of a visual learner. You can talk to me about it all day long and I may get it. Uh, you can ask me to read something about it and I may uh, get it. But if you sit me down or you take me along with you and you show it to me and you say, okay, this is how you do this. This is what you do when you do this. Uh, there's a much better chance that I am going to understand it and then I will be able to do it uh, uh, later uh, without you. Well, that's kind of what you see here with this council. The council, they're giving it to you, but now you're standing in a way. And so you're learning uh, by seeing. Uh, they're demonstrating it for you because it's their way of life. Now, again, this is the opposite of what God wants us to be in, but it's the place that so many people find themselves in. And then the final thing there is, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, progression here, again, we have the ungodly, we have the sinners, and now we have the scornful. Can I encourage you with something today? Avoid all scorners. Scorner is someone who has become uh, almost um, militant in their mindset to reject the things of God. And we have to be careful with scorners because scorners uh, are, are not ones that you should really spend any time trying to get them to become right. Uh, because those scorners will turn on you, because it'll backfire on you, because they are all such a heart and a mindset that says the ways of God are, are, are not right. And you know, I have made up my mind. I know best. I will do what I want to do. And for that kind of individual, you need to turn them over to the Lord and let the Lord deal with their heart, break their prideful spirit. And then hopefully they'll come to a point of being willing to listen. Unfortunately, I've seen a lot of young people who have grown up in church become scorners. Maybe it was because they never truly were saved. Maybe it was because they got bitter about something. Uh, whatever reason, uh, they have such a knowledge of the things of God because they have grown up with it. But then they reject it and they become adamantly against it and turn into a scorner. Well, God's desire for you and I is not to sit in the seat with them. Again, see the progression. First of all, I'm walking along and things are given to me. Now I'm standing and I'm learning because I'm seeing and I'm, I'm not necessarily participating, but I'm seeing it and I'm, I'm starting to take note of it and, and it's going to help teach me to then practice it. But then I get to a point and I start sitting down with those individuals. Now, if I'm sitting down with it, what are we doing? We're discussing, we're, we're, we're talking about it. I'm participating in their uh, mindsets in sort. Now, God says that individual will not be blessed. It's amazing to me that in our uh, uh, perverted mindsets, we tend to think, well, I can get away with a little bit of sin and things can still go well in life. And they may for a short season. They may for a little time, but eventually it will come to pass because God will not be mocked. Now, that same individual that wants to be blessed will not find it in that way, but where will we find it? Verse 2, but his delight. So the opposite of us uh, uh, walking in the counsel of the godly, the opposite of us standing in the way of sinners, the opposite of us sitting in the seat of scornful, is, is then... To have a delight in the law of the Lord. To have a delight in the law of the Lord. Uh, one of those things uh, this past week at camp, uh, 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 I guess it was, what day was it, Thursday? 
Thursday evening, everybody comes in for dinner, and somebody had graciously bought them pizza. Let me tell you something. From camp food to pizza, I mean, that's a pretty big step up there. There was a lot of expression of delight at that particular moment. In fact, two young men uh, attempted to have a uh, pizza eating contest, and um, uh, one of them was about yay big, and the other one was about yay big. Which one do you think won? You're right, the small guy. Uh, I think he's, he, he let this guy go as far as he could and then ate one more. It said he could have kept going a little bit, and I think it was somewhere around 15 or 16 pieces is where they stopped. Now, those aren't the huge pieces, all right? They're little squares, uh, so don't think of them as too gluttonous. But they did eat five times what I ate or something, you know. But uh, when you think about it, right, the, that delight in the things that we enjoy, we can see it in our face. I can see in your face that wearing a mask is not exactly a delight. But I know you love people and you love the Lord and, and I know that you're willing to do it and I appreciate that spirit within you. But when our delight is in the law of the Lord, that's when we enjoy it. That's when we want it. That's when we find, um, essentially, we, we find great uh, uh, delight in getting into the word of God. And so if I want to have this blessed lifestyle, I'm going to have to reject a lot of these other things that maybe uh, naturally might come about or maybe sought after. And then I have to find um, the resolve within my heart to dive into the word of God and to find great enjoyment in that. I, I think it's visible when you get into and you're like, man, I just can't wait to study the word of God. Uh, I think it's those times that we've gotten into our study and we're reading and we're getting some of those uh, gold nuggets, if you will, out, right? If you ever received those, uh, I, uh, Brother Larry, I appreciate him sometimes because he likes to share those gold nuggets with us. He's not uh, covetous or, or, you know, selfish in that sense. He likes to share those things. Man, look what the Lord showed me in Jeremiah this week and look at what happened. Look at the things that took place. And and that's when, that what, what does that do? That brings an enjoyment there that creates greater delight. Now, some of you are saying, well, I'm not going to say this out loud because this is unspiritual, but I don't know what you're talking about. And that's not a good place to be. And I hope that you'll recognize that and recognize this. You can receive delight in God's word. It can become something that is meaningful to you. It can become something that where the Lord is speaking to you and the Lord is, is challenging your heart and the Lord is, is growing you and the Lord is communicating His will for your life. And, it, and, and I can't overemphasize this aspect. You will not be blessed unless you're in God's Word. You will not be blessed unless you desire God's word and you find the light in uh, God's word. That's why I, I think one of the things that, that we have to be careful about sometimes is, is creating such a, a list of standards, a list of do's and a list of don'ts and forget, you know what, if we can't get the basic down of being in the word of God, we're going to, we'll never get the do's and the don'ts down. But if we can get where we have a love for God's word, a delight in God's word, you're not going to keep me from doing right. And you're not going to tempt me beyond that which I'm able to stand against in doing wrong. Really? Just, uh, just as a side, Psalm 37 verse 4 talks about the light thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Amen. We all want those desires of our heart. But we don't always want to delight ourselves in the Lord. Now, I, I can I encourage you in this. Um, you say, well, how does that work? When we delight ourselves in the Lord, then the things that He wants for us is the very things that we want. And He is more than happy to bless us with those things. It says there in that verse 2, the latter part, or the middle part of it, there towards the end, and in His law doth He what? Meditate day and night. Now, I, this was a challenge again this week at camp, but it was already something the Lord had been putting on my heart. Uh, in fact, I was planning on sharing it last Sunday, and we didn't get to it. But this aspect of meditation, again, as was stated, is probably one of the disciplines of the Christian life that is neglected, and maybe one of the most neglected. I, I don't like to put specific uh, 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 degrees on things sometimes because... Obviously, there's all sorts of things that we could plug into there. But if you think about it, many of you have been saved for a long time. 
how often have you meditated on the Word of God? See, what does it mean to meditate? Well, it means to go over it constantly. It means to replay it in your mind, replay it in your heart. It means to chew on it and to chew on it some more and to chew on it some more. We've used the example before when we're discussing this subject in regards to regurgitation, uh, the specific animals that like to eat, throw it up, eat, throw it up. I know that's not the technical scientific term to use, all right? That's just the modern lingo uh, to make you grossed out. But uh, sheep and cows and things of that, they chew the cud. They chew it, swallow it, chew it, swallow it, chew it, swallow it, you know, bring it back up, chew it some more. And what are they doing? They're getting one of the, they're essentially practicing a process that gets the greatest nutrients out of that specific um, piece of grass, all right? That blade of grass or that stick of hay or that grain. And it's helping them to be able to digest it and to, to gain all there is from it. Well, that's kind of the way it is with meditation. You know, you can read the Word of God and forget everything you read. But you can also read the Word of God and take what you read and go back over it and then go back over it again and then go back over it again. Now, obviously, when it comes to meditation, we can't take large portions of Scripture and meditate them, meditate on them all day long. All right? That is... That is impossible really to be able to do. So when it comes down to meditation, as we're going through the scriptures and the Lord gives us, and I would, I would encourage you in this, focus on a specific verse or maybe two or three verses and then take those all day long along with you wherever you go and whatever you do. Brother Larry? I don't know how to do this. The problem is that we do it with negative circumstances and it contributes to bitterness. If we were to flip that around and, 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 and do the same thing but with God's Word, yeah. how much better off would we be? Excellent point. We do meditate on those things when people wronged us, right? Yeah. And we play it over in our mind and we regurgitate it and we work it out all sorts of ways. That's a, that's a great way. If, now let's take that and replace it with the Scriptures. Replace it with the Word of God. And when we're going back over that Scripture, uh, we're, 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 we're uh, speaking it within our heart, uh, and there's different practical ways to do this. You can take that scripture, you can have a, a card, you can write it down, you can type something on your phone uh, and set it as a maybe an hourly reminder that it just kind of keeps coming back up throughout the day. Uh, you can memorize it before you get up and then you just start quoting it and then make sure you have your Bible close by so that when you forget a word or you forget get stuck, you can go back to it. And then you can have it set so that at least three times a day, you're going to refer back to that. You're going to get it in the morning and then at lunchtime, you're going to make sure that you go back and grab those scriptures and refresh yourself. And then in the afternoon or the evening, uh, even maybe four, four time right before bed. And, and you're going to meditate by recalling it, reading it, rehearsing it, thinking through the definitions of the words. What is God saying? How does this apply to my life? How can I utilize this truth within my life? And as you're doing that, you are meditating on God's word. And so what is God going to do because of that? He's going to bless you. You will be a blessed individual because you've refused these other things. You've delighted yourself in the Word of God, and now you're meditating. And, and, and he does preface it there a little bit, day and night. And so what are we trying to uh, emphasize there all the time, right? Uh, there's no uh, time that is just not feasible to uh, uh, meditate on God's Word. Uh, we can keep those thoughts in our minds. We, we constantly have thoughts going in through our minds. I know some of you think there's nothing happening there. Uh, sometimes you look at somebody and say, is there anything going on? Uh, but we do. We, we have a constant thought processes that are working uh, there. And so we need to fill them with the Scriptures. Now here, I, I want to challenge you this this week, today's Sunday, this is the first day of the week, is a great thing, great time to get this uh, week started off right. I want you to take a scripture today and I want you to meditate on it all the way until you lay down and you go to sleep. And make sure the last thing that you do tonight, okay, and, I, and if, I could, if I could demand you to do this, I would, all right? I am encouraging you to do this and may God... No, all right. Uh, I'm encouraging you to do this, all right, because I believe it would be a necessity for you and your spiritual health. But the last thing tonight that you think about, I want it to be that scripture. 
Now, I'm not going to give you the scripture. Maybe you want this scripture. Take it. I don't care. It's free for all. All right? Uh, maybe it'll be something in the message. Maybe it'll be something uh, in, the, in the small group time. Uh, maybe it'll just be something kind of like a side note uh, uh, that you're, you're, you're thinking about and then the Lord puts a scripture on your heart. Then go to that one. Grab it. Attempt to memorize it if you can, but at least rehearse it in your mind. Now, I want you to do that today. Okay? And then I want you to do it tomorrow. Now, that'll be two days. Then I want you to do it on Tuesday. That'd be three, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday, and then let's see what happens on Sunday. We have seven days, seven scriptures at least, all right? One scripture a day, if you want, two, three, I don't want to limit you, but at least seven scriptures uh, once a day, meditate on. Everybody understand how we meditate? Okay, anybody have any questions about it? Anybody have any uh, insights maybe in some of the ways that you meditated. I know one of the things that I used to uh, kind of practice in that meditation, I'd go through every word of the scripture and every time I get to one of those words, I'd emphasize that word. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate there in day and night. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate there in day and night. And if you go that and you emphasize each verse or each word, uh, it, it's, it's interesting because you realize like the word but, it, it does have an emphasis. What is the emphasis there? The emphasis is on what I'm not going to do and instead what I am going to do. Okay, so I'm going to turn a deaf ear to uh, those distractions that I have on a daily basis that really amounts to ungodly counsel. I'm not going to listen to all the things that are put out there on social media, on the news, or anything else. I, you know what? If I were to just kind of take that part of uh, uh, the, the, that practice that I have and eliminate that out of my life, you know what that's going to do? That's going to provide me with more time to be in God's Word. You say, well, then you're going to be dumb to all the things that are going around you. I don't think so. The Lord still finds a way for me to figure things out. If I prioritize what's important, I'll be able to handle those things a whole lot better. And I won't get caught up in things that I shouldn't be caught up in. Uh, let's, uh, let, let me burst some of your bubbles. Everything you read and see on the internet, everything you hear on TV, everything you watch is not true. Not all of it's true. Let me put it that way. There is deception out there and a lot of it. We have to be careful for that. But the word of God is true and it's completely true. It'll never deceive us. So we ought to back off some of those things. That's where the word but, that's what it emphasizes for me is I'm looking at a comparison here. Uh, things I shouldn't do, things I should do. And, and so you can get it by uh, emphasizing each word and then by going over it several times, it really helps commit it to memory. It helps bring out more insights in regards to it. Maybe there's a need to look up a word or two. Uh, we have so many uh, ways of being able to easily do that. I would encourage you in that. So everybody understand what we're gonna do? All right, how many are you gonna do that this week? Okay, good. All right, now you raised your hand. That was the easy part. <laughs> now meditate on it, all right? So verse three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I love the beautiful picture that we have here. The tree that is planted by the river of water, the tree that is rooted into a source that will provide it with uh, the necessities to continue to stay alive and beyond just living, bearing fruit. You know, it's God's desire for you and I, according to John chapter 15, that we bear much fruit. And we know the necessity of uh, our root system is founded in Jesus Christ because if we abide in him and he abide in us, then we shall bear much fruit. And you know, there's a lot of types of fruit that come out of our lives. There's a lot of evil fruit and, and, and what we call works of the flesh that we don't want to have manifested in our life. Well, if you're spending a lot of time in the counsel of the ungodly or you're standing in the way of sinners, you're sitting in a seat of a scornful, you are going to bear that kind of fruit. You say, well, I, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to control that. You can't control that. You're rooting yourself into those things and that's going to be the natural Result. Have you ever noticed uh, sometimes when you're going through a stage, if you want to put it that way, and you're, you're, you're struggling to maintain a meek and quiet spirit, you're struggling to have control of your spirit, and you're, you're on edge and you're getting angry very easy and very quickly. I can almost guarantee you if you're in that mode, 
I can almost guarantee you that you have not been rooted in the Word of God for some period of time. Maybe it was a short period, but maybe it was a longer period. And if you were to stop long enough to realize this is the fruit that's being exhibited in my life, this is what I'm struggling with because this is what's coming out, if I go back and I find what I was rooted in during that time, then I can identify the problem, fix it by getting in the Word of God. And you know what's going to happen? That anger is going to dissipate. And the meek and quiet spirit will re return. Uh, I think about it in this way. You've just finished reading an article uh, regarding something in the current events of the day. It's not making you happy. In fact, what's happened is now you're getting perturbed. Anybody ever done that? You're trying to fix it. You're trying to solve it. You're trying to tell those people what they really should think and what they really should say and what they really should believe. Well, let me give you a little insight. They may be lost individuals and they're not going to think what's right. But because I spent so much time focused on that, then what happens to me? Well, it almost becomes a little bit of a source and my roots go over and tap into that and now it's bringing up things, nutrients that are more detrimental to me than helpful. And now, what comes out? Well, this is the fruit that's produced from that. But you know, it's not going to be that way with the individual who plants themselves in God's Word, who allows Christ to abide in him and or in her. And what do we... We know Christ to be the Word, right? They're almost interchangeable here. So we have to delight ourselves and meditate in it in order to be that tree that's planted, in order to be that tree that's deeply rooted, in order to be that tree that's going to produce godly fruit that is going to benefit the others around us and bring praise and glory to our name, to the name of our God. And then in the process, what does it say there? Whatsoever we do is going to prosper. Why? Because God's working through us and he's accomplishing his will in us. And then he's utilizing us as an instrument to get those things done that he wants done. And so therefore the things that we do will prosper. But how many times do we think that prosperity is directly related to me being in God's word? Now, I've encouraged a lot of our college students, hey, if you want to have good grades, then you better prioritize your study of the word of God. Well, that doesn't make sense. I've got to study this, and I've got to study that, and I've got to read this, and I've got to write this paper, and I've got to do this, and I've got to do that. I know. I know you do. But if you prioritize God's Word, God then says whatever you do will prosper. And you know the best way to get a good grade on any paper is to make sure you're having your devotion time with the Lord. And then... He can work. I, I've seen God do it before. I can struggle on something for hours and hours and hours and not get it. I can prioritize the Lord and then get into something, and within a few minutes, the Lord's given it to me. That's just the way our God works. Verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Now, by the way, the ungodly, it, it, it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what they attempt. God's word is still true. And this is what's going to happen. They are not so. They are not blessed. They are not planted. They're not rooted. They're not going to bear good fruit. Instead, they're going to be driven away with the wind. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Be not deceived. God shall not be mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. We sow the things to godliness. We're going to reap the benefits of a godly life. We sow those things to ungodliness and we're going to reap the destruction. We'll reap the reward of the ungodly. That will never change because God has stated it. There'll never be exemptions, exceptions. Some, I, I, for some reason, uh, and, and, and maybe I'm a little more sensitive to those uh, uh, young, young people that have grown up in church, uh, because maybe I, I, I'm one of those, uh, but also I've dealt with a lot of those uh, as pastor, and, and uh, if there's anything that's perplexing, is someone that has heard the truth for 20 years and then neglects it and rejects it. And I don't always understand it. I think the Lord does give me some insights uh, into it, but I will say this. Uh, what I do see is common, a kind, kind of common mindset among those 
uh, individuals is when they walk away and they do their own thing, for some reason they think the Lord's going to give them a free pass on it. And they won't experience the same results or the same destruction or the same consequences that that person that never had any kind of spiritual upbringing is getting. But you know what? That's actually totally untrue. It's a deception. It's something that they, I don't know, they've made up in their mind. They bought into the devil's fed them. I, I, and, and I have to remind them often, look, you need to understand something. You're going down this path and here's what that path will bring. You will not be able to change the end of the path. The Lord determines those things. So my best encouragement to you is to recognize, hey, here's the path of life that brings great blessing and great reward. Get into God's word. And you know, some of those people that have that mindset, they, they don't like me telling them that. And that's why I think it's so important for us to be in the word of God. Because sometimes when you don't want to hear it from me, God's going to give you it directly. <laughs> He's going to show it to you right there. But usually those are the same ones that reject also uh, the word uh, specifically. Let's go to Psalms 103, right? Psalms 103. And um, I'm kind of running out of time once again. I know that's a shocker to so many of you, uh, but uh, this is just some, some really good uh, information that we can study. If I can get this computer going, and, and I want to I go back again to the idea of just a, a practical aspect of studying the scriptures. Uh, again, I don't believe that there is any uh, real, um, you know, some special, perfect, you know, always do it this way method of studying the scriptures. I believe that we have the opportunity uh, to really uh, develop several different methods and keep it fresh and keep it exciting and uh, keep it in enjoyable and intriguing. Uh, and sometimes there's a need for uh, just mixing up the way that we impart the Word of God into uh, our heart. While I was at camp, I, I took a, a lot of time to in the mornings uh, uh, or early in the mornings to, to listen to large portions of Scripture. Made it from uh, Hebrews to the end of uh, the of the New Testament, all the way to the end of Revelation, and and uh, just worked on that a little. Little bit, but then uh, there's also this week. I, I'm going to focus on the idea of, of getting that scripture and meditating on it, and uh, uh, trying to do a, a smaller portion and see uh, how the Lord speaks and and uh, communicates with me. And, and there's ways to be able uh, to mix that up. Some of you probably have ways that you could probably teach us about how God has helped you to be able to study the scriptures and and develop some specific methods. But this is one that uh, again I know I have taught and I've showed uh, to our church before. Um, and uh, we've been over it just you know briefly here a few times, uh, but I call this the DRCI uh, approach or DRCI Bible study uh, method because of Second Timothy chapter three sixteen that tells us specifically what the scriptures are beneficial to us for for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in uh, righteousness. Doctrine, what is right, reproof, what is wrong, correction is how to get right, and instruction in righteousness, how to stay right. All of the things that, that God says his scriptures are profitable for. So if they're profitable for that, then we ought to be able to receive those things and we ought to be able to profit from those things. So I'm going to start my Bible study here this morning. And uh, what is the first thing that I'm going to do? Pray. I'm going to say, Father, uh, help me today as I study the scriptures. Lord, please reveal to me if there is any sin in my life that I have not repented of, that I have not confessed before you, would you please show that to me? And, and, and Lord, uh, I, I want to be able to uh, uh, seek your forgiveness for that. And I might pause right there and I might just let the Lord speak to me. And he might say, you know, yesterday you had a bad attitude with one of your children. You kind of got in the flesh there for a moment. Uh, you said some things you shouldn't have said in a tone that you shouldn't have said it. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry for that. Father, would you please forgive me uh, for, for that anger, uh, for that misrepresentation of you as our Heavenly Father. Lord, please cleanse me from that sin and, and speak to me. Help me, help me to uh, overcome uh, that and and uh, make a note, I need to go back to that child after my study, and I need, to, I need to, to seek their forgiveness. That's how the Lord can work in that. And it may be something 
anything. He might show it to you. And then, Lord, as, as he shows those things, and then if I sense that there's really nothing else right there at that time, say, Lord, well, please, if there's anything else, show that as I go through the scriptures. And Father, would you please give me some specific insights today uh, that will help me to uh, be a, 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 a more godly individual, that will help me to serve you more. Father, provide me some insights today that will, that will teach me what your will and your way for my life is, uh, even today, Lord. And maybe there might be some specific other things uh, uh, that might come into uh, play with that. Maybe I have a specific need that's on my heart right then and there, a specific decision that I need to make. And I may ask the Lord, Lord, while I'm studying the scriptures today, uh, your word, would you speak to me concerning uh, that decision? Uh, would you impress upon my heart through that and help me, Lord, to understand it and to see it? And, and so I'm really putting that information to the Lord. I'm setting my heart right before God because I want to be in an open uh, mode that says, okay, Lord, speak to me. Uh, if you remember, uh, I think it was been a few months ago that we uh, talked about uh, Psalms. Uh, I can't remember the specific Psalm, I'm sorry. Uh, but it says, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? Do I lift up my soul? And I encouraged us and, and, and challenged us to lift up our soul before the Lord each and every day. And I've been practicing that, and that's been a real blessing to me. The soul, I, and in fact, even this morning, uh, once again praying that, Lord, I, I yield to you my mind today. Uh, please uh, affect my thinking, affect my thoughts, allow them to be uh, good thoughts and right thoughts. Help me to capture and, and to cast down anything that is in disobedience to you that is contrary to what you would have me thinking. Lord, I yield my mind, uh, my, my will to you. Father, I want every decision that I make today to be honoring and glorifying to you. I, I want it to be your will, not my will. I want to make the right decision. And I told the Lord this even this morning. I said, Lord, from the, from the smallest thing to the, to the greatest thing, I want it to be your will that takes place in my will and that decision be made. And Father, help my emotions. I lift them up to you. I yield them to you today. I may be tempted to uh, respond incorrectly to incorrect emotions, but Father, would you uh, affect my soul in a way that gives me the right kind of emotions? I may pray that right before this study because why? I want to lift my soul up to the Lord and I want him uh, then to bless me. I want him to then provide me with insights that I need. Now I'm going to go and date. That's an easy thing, but it's a point of accountability. Today's date is August 2nd, 2020. I know. I can't believe it's August either. Um, and then passage, all right? I'm going to write right within that passage, Psalms 103, okay? I'm going to write in there, Psalms 103, and I could, I could do that right here. My computer's a, just being a little bit slow uh, this morning, but I would do Psalm 103, uh, put it in there. See, I've already typed it. Now it's coming out. That's how slow it is today. But uh, in, in, in the process of that, now I'm going to go down here uh, to the doctrine, and, and I'm going to see what is it that I can see from this passage of Scripture that simply is right. What is right? So read this with me. We'll go into it, and this is how I would just do it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that it was within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now, uh, more than likely, what I like to do is I like to kind of read through the whole scripture, the whole chapter, if I can, and then I like to go back and start breaking it apart and breaking it down and taking little chunks at a time. And if I can get kind of more of the overview, the, the bigger picture, then break it into smaller chunks that I can really, um, uh, Brother Dean says this a lot, noodle on it, all right, and meditate on it. Uh, try to understand it. But for the sake of time this morning, uh, just I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to look for what are some things that are right. Help me out today. What are some things that are right that we could say, hey, that would be something that is doctrine. Okay, good. Say that a little bit louder. All right, the Lord is holy. There is a doctrine. There is something that is right, something that is true. And I could type that right in there. Uh, the Lord is holy versus unholy versus unrighteous, all right? And, and as we know about the Lord being holy, uh, that, that affects the way that I live. That affects the way that I think. But that is something that is right. You see anything else there uh, that we could say, this is right, this would be doctrine. Okay, bless the Lord. I need to bless the Lord. Again, what is right? Well, it's right for me to bless God. So I can put something right in that doctrine aspect, or I can say it this way, the Lord desires me to bless him. 
I'm making a statement that I know this is doctrine, this is right, this is what I need to uh, believe. Uh, one more. How about verse 3? Give me a doctrine from verse 3. What is right about verse 3? Okay, he forgives us, right? The Lord forgives all my iniquity, right? Now what it says there, that he forgiveth all thine iniquity. That is doctrine. You know, people don't always believe that. They don't always understand that or sense that. That is scripture. It's right there. The Lord forgives all my iniquity. And so that should be something that encouraged me. Now I'm going to go into reproof. What is wrong? I read some of these scriptures and these passages. What do I find in my life that is wrong? Uh, what is something that maybe you can pick up from that? Say again. Forget. Does that word stand out to you? Have you ever forgotten the benefits of God? I kind of forget everything. I, I forget some of the benefits he gave me last week. Right? So, reproof, what am I going to put in here? I have forgotten God's benefits. Because that's what's wrong in my life. The Lord doesn't want me to forget it. He doesn't want me to avoid it. He doesn't want me to stay away from it. He doesn't want me to uh, not recall those and relish in them. I forgot, or I have forgotten, or I'm guilty of forgetting the benefits of God. See how that works? That's the reproof. Now, what am I doing? I'm going in through these scriptures. I'm digging into them, getting some insights from them. Now, uh, the correction. Well, the correction is how to get right, all right? So, uh, reproof. Let's just see if we can find a correction. How do I not forget or how do I correct the fact that I forgot the benefits of God? All right, good. You can't jump ahead, but he did jump ahead, right? <laughs> he jumped ahead a little bit. It's more of the verses. So now what I see, I see there, you know what? Part of the way for me to get over what is wrong is I need to rehearse the things that God's done in my life. We're all so quick to focus on the negatives. How about let's focus on the positives? How about let's rehearse them? Let's say them over again. Let's talk about, Lord, let me just help me to recall, Father, what you've done for me this past week. Now, what is that going to do for us? Well, that's going to provide us that instruction in righteousness, which is something about how to stay right, how to continue in the right lifestyle. What does the Lord want us to do? He wants us to bless Him at all times. So my instruction in righteousness from just these first few verses, Lord, I want to bless you. Now, I'm out of time, but, but real quick, does that make sense? I'm out of time, but real quick, uh, I'm out of time, but I'm taking more time. Uh, for instance, on in a situation like that, bless the Lord. I don't know that I understand completely what bless means. So it might help me if I then stop for a moment and I take time to look up the meaning of that word. Okay? Now, how are we going to do that? What resource are we going to use? I'll show you that next week. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the time that you've given to us. Grateful, Lord, for the, the, just the be able to study your word and dig into your word and get things from your word. And Lord, I pray that you'd help each and every one of us this week as we concentrate on that aspect of meditation, grabbing a scripture uh, that you provide us with, Lord, rehearsing it throughout the entire day, especially, Lord, remembering it at night before we go to bed. And Lord, just show us the blessings and the benefits that come from that that would help us to continue on with that practice. We love you, Lord, so much. Increase our desire and our delight in your word. In this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. We're gonna stay